And when you're traveling, it's not like your work. It's not like you're going on vacation. You are in control. It's a life that you don't need a vacation from because you've put in this work and you're learning to weaponize this travel that now I'm not only, again, I'm not falling behind on travel. I'm not slipping off on track. I'm even using this to propel myself forward. It's like you must be moving forward, whether you're traveling, if there's delays, it doesn't matter if it's an overnight flight. You need to learn how to weaponize this to propel yourself forward. So you're constantly getting better. I'm not going to just call it a day because, oh, it's a travel day and say it's just break even. Hell no. I'm going to use that and weaponize it with these strides and tactics we're using. What's up, freaks? Welcome to another episode of the Steve Eckert Show podcast. Today, we are going to talk about how to maintain, and not just maintain and survive, and not only thrive, but weaponize your travel as a busy man, entrepreneur, leader, professional, whatever it is, how to weaponize that travel here on the Steve Eckert Show podcast. And that's what we do on this show every week. If you've watched every episode, it's all about how to flip that switch and have this no excuses, badass mindset guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles that are preventing your success in your mindset, your family, your fitness, and your business. So you could stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own freaking terms. And that's what really weaponizing your travel, not letting your travel diminish the way you operate, the, your fitness and your business and, and getting off track all the time. Like, listen, if you're, if you're having to travel often or monthly even, once a month. That means once a month, you're getting thrown way off track. And that is not the way it needs to be. That is also unacceptable because there are ways to weaponize this. And we're going to dive into this. That's what, what this episode, with what, what this show is all about. Learning to weaponize everything, including your travel time. And we're going to dive into some real quick strategies. It's going to be a real quick, straightforward episode on how to weaponize your travel. And we're going to kind of take it through a flow from behind the scenes before you start uh, mentally, and then how to prepare for the travel, the start of the travel, the finish of the travel, and like what to think about throughout it and how you can thrive. And it can literally not only can the travel not hold you back or knock you off track, it actually can propel you forward if you operate the right way. Like when I travel, I, I use that as a force multiplying time. And I'm going to show you exactly how in these next few minutes here on the podcast. Let's start off with Committing to sticking to your daily disciplines. Now, that doesn't mean everything. It also doesn't mean the same amounts of time or the order. Yes, you could be flexible with your schedule, but, but your daily disciplines, like the things you know that you need to do as a man every day to operate, to dominate in your, your mindset, your family, your fitness, and your business, those things you need to do no matter what, seven days a week, you need to commit first off the bat, that you are going to get those done no matter what. Whether you're traveling, whether there's a delay, you have an overnight flight, an early morning flight, doesn't matter. You have to know and really have clarity on what are your daily disciplines. You can call them daily disciplines, daily habits, non-negotiables, whatever the hell you want to call them. I call them daily disciplines. What are those? And then commit to sticking to them during your travel. It, does, it might not mean you're, you're doing them the same time you normally do them, like sometimes I won't, like I normally journal during my morning routine and do my writing. If I know I'm traveling, I probably might have to wake up earlier sometimes, depending on the time of the travel. I won't have time to do that in the morning. Or I don't want to do that in the morning. So maybe I'll save that for the plane. Boom. You're stuck on a freaking plane. There's so much you could do. So be realized you could be flexible with your schedule. That's the next thing. Understand you can be flexible. It's not failure to move things around and juggle things around, especially if it's in your control and it's with a strategy. It's not just winging it and figuring out and, and whatever. So stick to your daily disciplines, commit to that, understand and clarify what those daily disciplines are first, and then commit to sticking to them no matter what. Then give yourself the, the freedom of flexibility, structured and controlled and intentional flexibility with your schedule. Then also, before I travel, I... I you sometimes have my assistant plan the travel for me, but 
a lot of times I don't mind spending a few extra minutes to just go check it out myself because I'm very specific about the times I want to leave, the amount of time I want to be on the plane, the, the type of seat that I'm in. Very specific about it because this is all parts of the puzzle that weaponize the travel. So I plan the flight and plan the times when I'm going to leave and it's very coordinated with maybe when I'm going to work out. I have to decide, am I going to work out before I leave or work out when I get to my location? And so I have to play around with that depending on the, the day of the week it is. Depends on what time I want to leave, what time I'm going to work out, what type of workout I'm doing, what calls I have that day, or if I have to meet some clients or coaching calls or whatever it is, or do I have a, a Freak Father Alliance men's mentorship group coaching call that day? Depends on what the day of the week is. It's revolved around my workouts, clients, and, and maybe calls and things like that, coaching calls. And it, 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 I'm planning that route and planning that the, the flight times so that it's optimal. So I'm weaponizing the flight times and I know what I'm doing. I, I'm, I'm in control of the schedule. And this is all committing to like when I'm controlling this stuff. So you're, you're committing, you're, you're acknowledging what the daily disciplines are. You're committing to them. You're understanding to be flexible with your schedule. You're planning the route and the times. This is how you create a life that you don't need a vacation from. So when you're traveling, it's not like your work. It's not like you're going on vacation. You are in control. It's a life that you don't need a vacation from because you've put in this work and you're learning to weaponize this travel that now I'm not only, again, I'm not falling behind on travel. I'm not slipping off on track. I'm even using this to propel myself forward. It's like you must be moving forward, whether you're traveling, even if there's delays, it doesn't matter if it's an overnight flight. You need to learn how to weaponize this to propel yourself forward. So you're constantly getting better. I'm not going to just call it a day because, oh, it's a travel day and say it's just break even. Hell no. I'm going to use that and weaponize it with these strides and tactics we're using here in this podcast episode. And again, that's how you create this life you don't need a vacation from. So the next things are research, researching the area. Where are the hotel gyms? Where are the stores, the supermarkets, the restaurants where I can get the healthy food? What, what, where I could go pick up the shit I might need to pick up if I didn't bring myself? So I'm going to research the area. Know exactly what is in that hotel gym. And on top of that, it doesn't matter if the hotel gym is closed. I've been to places where it had a great hotel gym online. You get there and they're like, oh, sorry, it's closed for renovation and it's bullshit and whatever. I always have an extra bag, an extra check-in that I check in that has all of my gear, all my workout clothes, all my own extra food and supplements and shaker bottles and shakes and protein powders and pre-workouts and post-workouts and all that stuff. An entire check-in bag that I'll do. And even if I have to pay extra money for that check-in, to me, that's worth it. I know I'm going to have food that I can even survive just off of what's in that bag for the entire thing. Then I'm also having gear, like I have a whatever, little tools, little toolkits, a little multi-tool and all that stuff, a, a spork. So no matter what, I have the, everything I need to survive out of that one bag. Running clothes, then there's an extra separate workout bag inside that, which has like a TRX and sliders and exercise bands and things like that jump rope. So no matter what, I will I will have everything I need there. If I have to go a week or however long the, the amount of the stay is, I will have enough extra clothes, extra gear, supplies, food, supplements for that amount of time, and even a little bit extra. I'll even go a little small percentage extra in case you get stuck and you're out an extra day or a couple extra days, but also knowing the location of research in the area because then you can go pick some shit up and know that it's right there and you do what you got to do. So that's the, the one thing, pe- putting that extra bag and you know, Midge, my daughter, she'll check in. She's got this. She went a little overboard with this. We just went somewhere recently. I don't remember where it was. And she checked in literally a full-size luggage. Like I'm talking, you know, those big luggage. And luckily, we have enough points on the, on the cards and everything that we get up to three bags per person for 75 pounds each. She had a full check-in luggage of just stuffed animals. And this was like a three-day trip somewhere, a business trip I had. I don't remember where it was. But she had a full check-in luggage that would have been an extra $75 or $150, whatever it is for the, for the luggage, just for her stuffed animals. So I'm not saying go that overboard, but that's an example. And Tyson one time, forget about that, he brought a check-in luggage. He went overseas one time with all his toy guns and decided on the way back. That was when he was going to Poland. On the way back, he's going to put some of those toy guns in his carry-on bag, and they confiscated all his toy guns. Like how ridiculous. 
Is he really going to hijack a plane? Is a 10-year-old kid, or however old it was at the time, going to hijack a plane with a bunch of Nerf guns? Like some of them were Nerf guns, like the bright orange Nerf guns. Some were the little black, whatever looked a little real-ish. But yeah, but that's going a little overboard. But if you want to be prepared, take the things that are going to make you happy and not throw you too far off the way that you do things, about your way you operate, so that you are just in the rhythm and it's a life you don't need a vacation from. And speaking of, he's checking the toy guns. If I'm going to a state where my concealed carry permit for an actual weapon is reciprocated, I will check in gun or guns, or maybe if I'm going to do some shooting wherever I'm going, even a, a long gun sometimes, but at least a pistol or two, I'm checking it in. It takes like two extra minutes. It's so easy to do. You just put it in certain kind of cases and you just let them know, you declare it and you fill out like you sign, fill out one little piece of paper and they put it in there. So I'm checking that in because that's the kind of lifestyle I live. I want to know that I'm going to have my toys and tools with me where I go, not just my exercise toys and tools, but my self-protection toys and tools. I might want to go shooting when I'm there. I might want to go have some fun. Maybe it's a, a different place. I'm going to go check out some ranges or some outdoor ranges, or maybe that's what I'm doing when I'm connecting with the people that I'm going there to go see. And that's another thing I'll do. I will check to, to see, all right, who do I know in this area? Who do I know in the area that I can connect with? And if I have time, now that sometimes I'm just in and out that I won't even go and connect with people in that area, but if I have a little extra time or depending on when the flights are taking off and whatever else I, I do, or maybe I'm staying an extra day, I'll see who do I know in this area and, and shit with the project, between the project and Operation Black Site and all the coaching programs we do and the Freak Father Alliance and the Infinite Freak Fitness Formula, online training program, all these different, coach, all these different coaching programs and events that I'm part of. There's probably not a state in the country that, that I don't know, at least a few people. So I'll check in. Who's there? Who can I connect with? Who can I go get a workout with? It's usually about let's go get a workout, get something to eat, maybe hang out for a little while, maybe shoot a podcast. How can I weaponize this travel? Like, I want to see if, is, is there anything I could do out here, maybe even to make some extra money? I could connect some people who runs a podcast out here. Maybe I can go be a guest in a podcast, go shoot some video, go shoot some content, get a workout with someone also get some content out of that workout. Like this is how you weaponize your travel and not only break even on the travel, but make it that it's propelling you forward and you're continuing to elevate yourself. And make before I leave, I'll always check my, my laptop. I'll bring a tablet as a backup. Of course, the phone and all three of them, depending on what type of trip I'm doing, what information or files I want to work on on the plane. I'll plan ahead of time. What am I going to work on on the plane? What work am I going to be using on the plane so I can make sure I make all those files available offline in case for whatever reason the Wi-Fi on the plane doesn't work. I'll usually just get Wi-Fi, but if the Wi-Fi is not working, I need to make sure I have those files to still use, so I'll make them available offline. I'll save them offline on the phone, on the tablet, on the laptop. Sometimes I'll even bring a second laptop in, in my either carry on or check in bag just as a backup in case the one goes wacky, making sure I have the right connections I need. If I'm going to speak or going to do a presentation, do I have the right HDMI cables? And sure, the places can have them, but sometimes there's weird connectors you need. I bring all that shit extra chargers, extra like this thing for presentations, for slideshows and laser pointers and things like that. I'll bring extra ones of those, extra batteries, extra chargers. I'm thinking of everything. I want to make sure I am prepared so I can weaponize this and dominate this travel. Another way to do that is get first class when you can. Yeah, it's expensive, but the, the reason for first class first, yeah, it's more comfortable. You're comfort, more comfortable traveling. Even just a little more comfort makes the traveling that much better. But and, and if you have a, a business credit card that you use for business a lot and you travel a lot for business, build up those points and you get upgrades when you can. So you don't have to spend all that money on first class. But guess what? Spending the money on first class is worth it. You also don't know who you're sitting next to. That could be a potential you know, person that you now meet in that city and a potential contact. Maybe they run a business or service and you could become their client or maybe they're going to be your client. You never know what kind of connections networking could get done up there in first class. And there's a, a, usually a, obviously a higher potential of doing some connecting and networking with individuals up there in first class and people you might do business with in the future or just connect with or whatever it is in the, into the city you're going into. Maybe somebody's just going to get a workout with. Never know. And 
on top of that, getting first class is get the like the TSA pre-check. We made sure we do things like that, where you don't have to take off your shoes. You don't have to take your laptops out of the bags. You just zip through. You can go faster on the line. All this stuff makes it more efficient, makes travel that little less painful. And travel is always going to test your patience. It's always going to be a little painful, but all these things make it better the way you could weaponize it and even make it a bonus, make it a force multiplier. Know what you're going to work on on the plane. Know what you're going to work on in the room. And listen, I can go into a room. I have so much stuff planned out and so much work planned. That's like a superpower of mine. I could be in a, a trip alone in a hotel room and just sit there and grind out some work in between events or in between speaking or in between coaching clients that I'm meeting or, or companies where I'm going to run a leadership seminar or whatever. And I will just grind it out there because I planned ahead of time. These are the things I'm going to work on on the plane, in the room. I have all the files saved offline. I have an extra laptop. So no matter what, there's a backup plan to the backup plan. And then here's a huge one that I recommend you do as a man as often as possible that it makes sense is bring your family along for the ride, even if it's a work and a business trip. Why not? Why spend all those days away when you could just bring them along for the ride with you? where you turn, you weaponize that travel. So yeah, you might have to do a workshop. I might have to work, run a workshop until 5 p.m. And then maybe have to go to a VIP dinner until 8 p.m. But guess what? After that, I'll be able to hang out with the family, talk to them, hang out, chill, go in the morning, get a workout in together, maybe meet them for lunch and then travel, still traveling together back and forth on the planes. So I'm not doing it by myself, still hanging out, having fun, talking shit, connecting with the family and with the kids. Like whenever possible, I bring the, and I'd say at least 50% of the time, more than 50% of the time, they are coming with me, the entire family. Will it cost more money? Sure. Is it worth it? Hell yes. Rather than being away from them that amount of time, it also makes it not as painful, makes you be willing to do more when you're just taking the whole freaking gang, the whole freak family with you. So take them along for the ride. And then when they're with you and you know you're going to have to do some a, a certain amount of work, communicate your schedule, your work schedule, the meeting schedule that they know you're not going to be available maybe this entire day or until nighttime. Communicate that ahead of time. Or even if you're on vacation, communicate ahead of time when you're traveling about the time you need to set aside for calls or for some work or whatever is going to go on. And, and the same thing with associates and business partners, communicate what your schedule will need to be so there's no confusion when you need to dip out or you need to go back to the hotel room early because you want to go get some work done or sleep or whatever. And that's the next thing. Still get sleep. Don't Your sleep schedule shouldn't change much. It might be a different times, but it shouldn't change much. But you also sometimes might get less sleep certain nights. That's why you train for that. That's why you're ready for that. You're prepared for that, but still try to get as much rest, recovery, and sleep as possible. Don't eat shit just because you're traveling. Just because you're on a plane or you're in a different city is not an excuse to eat shit, which is why I bring a whole bag of my own stuff. You still need to do your workouts, and you still need to warm up for your workouts. I still stretch. I still foam roll and do all the warm-up and mobility work before the workouts. Just because I'm traveling doesn't mean I'm going to rush the workouts. That is still a priority. Remember, the non-negotiables, the daily disciplines have to happen. Doesn't mean I'm going to eat shit just because I'm traveling. Even if I have to do a hotel room workout, I've done workouts in the airport during a delay or the hotel gym, even with shitty ass equipment. Doesn't matter. And all along the way, these are just additional little bonus things is creating content, using that time to create content, how you live your life, how you work, how you work on the road, how you take your, all the things we just mentioned are content pieces in your, probably you connect somewhere into your business, into your personal brand, whatever it is. We also, when, when we can, we bring our pets along with us on travel. If we're in the RV or driving, we bring them with us and check them into a hotel. We've actually even had babysitters when the kids were younger and needed babysitters. They still probably need babysitters. I still need a pro fucking babysitter probably. He's upset that he still needs, I said he still needs a babysitter. But we used to hire, there's companies that hotels are attached to that have their in-house babysitters that they've pre-vetted and they're, they're like background checked and whatever. And they literally just come to your room and they just watch your kids in the room while you go and do what you have to do. So it makes it, all these are just making the resistance level down to make excuses or to, to, to fall off track when you're traveling. These are all ways to weaponize your travel. Bring the pets, bring the video. Which sometimes we'll bring video games with us. The whole system will bring or board games, whatever it is to keep the lifestyle going. So it's work, it's play, it's life, it's business, it's personal, it's professional, all molded into one, whether you're at home, whether you're on in an RV trip or traveling on a plane, you're on the road, you're working, whether it's vacation or a business trip, creating a life you don't need a vacation from. This is exactly how you weaponize that travel. 
And this is one of the topics that we dive into in the Freak Father Alliance about how to be this type of leadership, this type of man, this type of entrepreneur, how to not let you not neglect one area of your life for the other because it doesn't need to be that way. You could have work-life symmetry rather than work-life imbalance. And that's what the Freak Father Alliance Men's Mentorship Group Coaching Program is all about. It's about helping entrepreneurial fathers and men to develop a no excuses mindset so they can build more muscle, make more money, have more meaning so that they can attack their mission and create their ideal lifestyle with time freedom for their families and learning to weaponize this travel and all the other strategies and tactics we use in the Freak Father Alliance will show you the way and shit. If you just watch all the 50 something previous episodes of the Steve Ecker Show podcast, you will learn you could build a million dollar business just by following what's on this podcast. Guarantee it with still having that work-life symmetry and not being out of balance and having to neglect your fitness for your business or neglect your family for your fitness and your business or any of the above. That's what it's all about on the Freak Father Alliance group coaching program and here on the Steve Eggers Show podcast. And I will see you next time on the next episode. And in case no one told you yet today, you are freaking awesome. No excuses.